Oh man, today we're using a throwback GPU in more ways than one, and I can't wait to show you how it performs inside our gaming PC. Today's build totaled up to just under the $600 mark, and I'm gonna be showing you all the parts inside of here in case if you wanna copy it for yourself. And even if you don't, we'll at least go down memory lane a bit with this GPU. After that, we're of course gonna benchmark it to see what this slightly older hardware is still capable of in 2025. But first, I gotta get this thing assembled over on my Twitch live stream. Twitch.tv slash ZaxTechTurf is where I live stream all of my PC builds, by the way, it's the place to be. So starting with the CPU, we got none other than the Ryzen 5 5600, and at this sub $600 price total, there really is just no other choice unless you buy used. Some parts inside this build are indeed used, but for the CPU, I snagged this off AliExpress for a too good to pass up price of just $74. That's some unreal value for this monster six core and 12 threaded chip, because as we know, the 5600 still pairs really nicely with the mid range graphics cards. The motherboard I'm plugging this into is the first used component of the day, and this is the M MSI B550 Gaming Gen 3 that I picked up on eBay for 80 bucks. Typically when I'm buying used motherboards, I like to snag them off Amazon resale since they've been pretty reliable and have an easy Amazon return policy, but lately that well seems to have been dried up. If you're buying from eBay, you'll wanna make sure you only buy from a trusted and reputable seller, and for 80 bucks, this is unfortunately some good value in 2025. Even on B450 or any AM4 platform, ATX size motherboards are still quite expensive, so this $80 price tag was actually kinda good. This board has a pretty clear clean all black design with probably decent enough VRMs, but not too many other bells and whistles. It's no longer super useful in 2025, but there is indeed a BIOS flash button here, which can sometimes come in handy. And although I haven't tested it myself, I would say that this is probably good enough to handle a 5700X3D upgrade later on down the line if you want to. Next up, we have the RAM, and this kit is the Clevbolt X 2x16 gigabyte DDR4 kit clocked at 3200 megahertz with a CL16 rating. Other than ultra budget builds, I honestly think gone are the days of using 16 gigabytes of RAM because we're finally at a time period where I think this is the new sweet spot. The price difference these days on DDR4 going from 16 to 32 gigabytes is usually less than like 15 bucks. And since more and more games are actually utilizing more than 16, it's becoming an easy choice. Now granted, if you are still building a sub $500 PC, you probably still wanna start at 16 gigs. But for builds like this, I'm gonna start going with 32 from here on out. Another thing I'll continue to use from here on out, or at least in some builds, which is also from Clev, which is their crass C910 one terabyte NVMe. This is a gen four model with some pretty decent read and write speeds, but the main reason I selected this one was because it was one of the cheapest available one terabyte gen four drives. If you wanna spend more money for a faster drive, then feel free. But personally, with this kind of build budget, I'd rather save that money for the more performance impacting components like the CPU, GPU, and 32 gigs of RAM. Before we talk about that throwback GPU though, next up is the power supply, and this is the MSI Mag A 550BN. Once again, this is a tier C non-modular unit, but that's all I personally need in a build like this. Well, actually, I do need one more thing, but chances are you actually don't. I'm plugging in these Okino 16 gauge all black extensions, and that's just because I'm still operating with the aesthetics over everything mindset. You absolutely do not need to copy these for your own build. Even if the stock cables are all black, I still just personally prefer this braided and super clean cable design versus the plasticky shielded ones that come with the power supply. Using black extensions is always a questionable move, and if you don't agree with me doing it, then just take 17 bucks off the total build price and yours will be cheaper than mine. Now, one part I definitely don't actually recommend you copy, at least not anymore, is the case, and this is the Sama V Mesh. For some context, I've used a ton of Sama products in the past, including recently in my $1,000 all Intel build video, but this specific model just didn't quite hit the mark like they usually do. When I was live streaming this build, I noticed that this gap up here towards the top that's used for routing your 4 plus 4 CPU power cable wasn't actually big enough or positioned good enough when the motherboard is installed. When it's installed, there's just a tiny gap here, which means you have to route your power cable up and through the case before you install the motherboard. This may not seem like a huge deal to some of you, and in reality it actually isn't, but from a perspective like mine, this is just completely unacceptable. I remember we used to deal with issues like this five to 10 years ago with some of the budget case brands, but I thought we completely moved past this being a thing. Like I said, I've enjoyed a ton of Sama case models recently, but this one, they kind of took a few steps backwards. On top of that, this case does absolutely nothing to help you with cable management in the back. For $75 with three pre-installed ARGB fans, this already isn't the best deal to be had. I much prefer going with something like the Montec XR, which is actually usually a bit cheaper. And speaking of the Montec XR, that's actually the number one case I recommended for my brand new build guide templates over on zttbuildhelp.com. There's a new category called NVIDIA Gaming, which are pure performance builds, but with an NVIDIA GPU. They have all the descriptions, links, and even alternatives you need for different price ranges. zttbuildhelp.com is always linked down in the description. Back to today's build though, next up we have the CPU cooler, and this is probably the only part that requires 
requires any sort of asterisk. It's the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo Black, and for 30 bucks, this is indeed a solid product, and I don't think you'll have any issues with it, but being 100% transparent, the only reason I'm using it is because I have a stack of them here at the office. At some point in time, Newegg was giving these out for free with a certain CPU purchase that we use for zttbuilds.com, so I got a bunch of them, and I wouldn't have used this originally because of the different RGB style. I'm not a huge fan of mix and matching different RGB styles, such as how this one has the halo rings and the case fans are just traditional RGB fan blades. It's not a huge deal and the whole thing still looks pretty clean, but I would have gone with a cooler like the Vitro V5 if I didn't already have this. And finally, the last component, which is indeed the entire theme and motivation behind this build, is not just the RTX 2070, but the EVGA XC Gaming RTX 2070. Huge shout out and rip to EVGA graphics cards because I know we've all been missing them for a bit now, but I figured I would do my part and shine some light back to what used to be one of the best GPU options. This card looks super clean and minimal, and I love just how that simple text on the side can match the entire build color scheme, and it's not too flashy or over the top. Now, the reason why I'm going with an RTX 2070 was completely unintentional. I was answering a comment for one of my YouTube shorts about someone asking me about the RTX 2070 performing in 2025, and during the process of me researching, I discovered that this is actually a hidden gem right now in terms of value. You can find these cards for around 150 to 190 use, and I grabbed this for 175 off of eBay. I do think there were a couple options available for a bit cheaper than this one, but I was willing to pay a little extra so I could revitalize EVGA in this video. If you go to zttbuildhelp.com and look at the 1080p Ultra GPU comparison charts, here you can see that the 2070 is just a bit better than the RX 6600 and right in between the RX 5700 and 5700 XT. For $175, that's actually pretty good considering a brand new RX 6600 is $200 and every GPU that I just mentioned is really good in terms of FPS per dollar value, but the 2070 is the only Nvidia option. If you're hunting for a sub $200 GPU or even a sub 175, this very well might be one of the best possible options if you prefer to stick to Nvidia. We won't get the absolute latest GPU technology like we do with the RTX 40 series and the upcoming 50 series cards, but there are still a few benefits. Before we get into that GPU performance though, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and I was actually able to keep this whole thing under $600. That's only possible because of the AliExpress CPU and used motherboard and graphics cards, so keep that in mind. However, you probably won't spend $17 on black extensions. We are taking a little bit extra of a risk with the used parts, but when that plays out like it did today, we're saving a few hundred dollars compared to a brand new build with all new parts, but similar performance. And speaking of performance, let's jump into some games real quickly. And first up, we have Starfield, which is one that I've recently been back into. And in 1080p, we did get over that 60 FPS mark, but we had to put the settings down to low. That's not all bad though, because this is still a very demanding game and runs better on AMD. So I consider that a dub getting over 60. Next up is the new Delta Force. And here we got to crank up the settings up to 1080p high, and we got a solid 140 average FPS. For another new title, here's Marvel Rivals, and the FPS didn't get quite up to that higher refresh rate gaming level. In 1080p high, we got 75 FPS, but we of course could drop those settings to boost it up a bit. And finally, we have Fortnite, because most people still want to know how that performs, and in 1080p with pro settings, this Ryzen 5 5600 and RTX 2070 build cranked out a pretty impressive 212 average FPS. And for all the other games, here are the results, and most of them are looking pretty good around that 1080p high level of range, but if you want to see what they actually look like, we also uploaded a dedicated benchmarking video for this build over on the ZTT Extras channel. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this throwback with the EVGA RTX 2070. If you want to see a completely different way to build a PC around this price range, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.